In this video, I will discuss the origin of the flying elbow swing fault myth and why it is not a problem. Well, here's how you know why it is absolutely not a problem. It's because these three great champions, Jack Nicklaus, Larry Nelson, Miller Barber, all had high elbows, inappropriately called flying elbow. Here is the great Jimmy Bruin, greatest amateur from Ireland, uh, and then Matthew Wolf, high elbows. So where does all this start, this absolute nonsense? Where did it start? Well, this is a 1964 book. This is Julian, Julius, was it, is it Julian, Julius Boros. And you can see 1964. And so here you have the right elbow under the club shaft, flying elbow, contributes to a slice by encouraging an outside blah, blah, blah. Well, if that's true, then how come this guy didn't hit slices? How come this guy hit it straight? You see, it's just, I just don't get how these golf pros just make stuff up the way they do. So let me give you another example. On the backswing, this right elbow must not fly out, and only if it is correctly positioned at address will it be able to fold close to the body. During the first half of the backswing, the right elbow should not move hardly at all. It mustn't slide out laterally or slip back to the right side. As it falls close to the body, the elbow should always be pointing to the ground. Where did this come from? It sounds like some rules, right? You must not fly out. It mustn't slide out. It must be pointing, always be pointing to the ground. And uh, we get it from Ben Hogan's book. All right, so people think that I'm bashing Ben Hogan hardly. I think he was the most unbelievable golfer ever. But the problem is his book. These are rules. On the backswing, the right elbow must not fly out, should always be pointing to the ground. All this means is that Ben Hogan's book should have been titled Ben Hogan's Five Lessons, not the modern fundamentals which apply to everybody. It should have been Ben Hogan's Five Lessons, How to Swing Like Ben Hogan. That's what he should have titled the book, as opposed to a rule book for all to follow. Now, with that in mind, how many people? So here is an example. You can see the cover of his book. Well, it's front on, but, but from behind, it would look like this. How many pros swing like this? How many pros currently today and in the past swung like Ben Hogan with the elbow so tight to the body at the top of the backswing? How many? On the PGA Tour right now, how many? Uh, you know, you look for it, and you really only see one guy's name show up. And here he is, Sergio Garcia. You can kind of see the elbow looks similar. The other guy I thought of that looks almost identical until I took a closer shot is Ricky Fowler. His elbow is a little further away, but maybe from behind it would look like it's pointing down. I really can't tell. But you can see it looks very, very similar. And then surprisingly, senior citizen swing of Nick Faldo. He's like late 50s here. You can see that he looks like Hogan here. Now, Hogan, of course, had the, had the club uh, parallel to, to the ground from that position, but this was not Nick, uh, Nick Faldo's swing when he was young. You can see here is Nick Faldo, elbow, old man elbow, old man. I mean, listen, I'm 62. He's, what, 63 or 64, so I'm not, like, I'm not using old man as a pejorative here. But you can see young Nick Faldo. This is, I think, the Belfry Ryder Cup, 1993. You can see how high his elbow was. They should have just used the word high or low elbow. That's what they should have used. But, you know, you know, Ben Hogan was pretty convinced that his way was the way. So here are the backswing positions, top of the backswing of four great players. Now, the reason why underneath Larry Nelson, I have 1019 and Miller Barber 1124. And the reason why I put Miller Barber here, you know, it's not just because he has the so-called pejorative taking place is because Miller Barber really gets no love. Look at Miller Barber. Miller Barber won 11 times on the regular tour, playing against two, Playing against Palmer, Nicholas, Player, Trevino in their prime. So he won 11 times on the PGA Tour and 24 times on the Senior Tour. Larry Nelson, who's in the Hall of Fame, only has 10 and 19. Now, obviously, Nelson won three majors, whereas Barber did not. But on the Senior Tour, Miller Barber won five majors. And Miller Barber is the sixth all-time 
winner on what was originally called the Senior Tour, or was called the Senior Tour at one point. So why does Miller Barber get no love? I think it's because of the way, because of what you're looking at right there. It's so, so unique and, you know, non-boilerplate. So let's look, though, at how Miller Barber manages to pull this off, because this would be, you know, the Ben Hogan swing plane line here. This would be illustrating spine angle and whether or not he stands up at impact and not at all. So the question is, you know, how does Miller Barber actually get to this perfect impact position? Because from this impact position, from this set of position to this impact position, you'd have no idea that he does this. You'd have no idea at all. So somehow, all of these great players, despite having totally different backswings, they all got to close to perfect impact. Now, this is where I think modern golf instruction has failed all of us amateurs. I mean, the great players, you know, amateurs and pros, it, it doesn't make any difference because these guys, well, they're great and they have exceptional movement skills. Their athleticism is exceptional, right? They are high caliber. They're like the Michael Jordans of basketball. So we can all go out and play basketball, but we're not going to be able to play like Michael Jordan. So this is the problem. Modern golf instruction focuses endlessly on all these positions to the point that us amateurs become neurotic and completely screwed up. Where we should be focusing, where golf instruction should be focusing, is here. How do these guys, how, the way all these guys get their club back to impact, no matter where they start, is by proper legwork. Now, you think about proper legwork, the most common term is, okay, at the top of the backswing, you want to fire your hips. What the hell does fire your hips mean? You know, did you know that your hip muscles <laughs> are some of the weakest muscles in your body, except for the glutes, but the glutes are not really involved in rotation anyway? Yeah, the hip muscles are very misunderstood in the golf swing. Fire the hips is a, frankly, an idiotic term to put in the head, in, into the heads of amateur golfers. Pros just swing properly, they don't have to worry about that, but amateurs should not be hearing fire the hips because it suggests that the hips are firing and the hips do not fire. So look at this, hip rotation in the golf swing is not from hip muscles. That is the problem. The hip movement occurs as a consequence of leg work. So up until a year ago, I just could not, it was just horrible. And then I finally realized I had to exaggerate my leg action to even remotely, remotely uh, start moving through the ball better. So leg action. So these are, this is called the lateral lunge driver drill. This is the squatting driver drill. This is, you can see, so imagine this one here. This would be top of backswing for lateral lunge driver drill, and this is through impact lateral lunge driver drill. And I've also put a, put a video up called how to do the lateral lunge driver drill. Now in this video, I'm going to show you another. So what am I doing this for? If we work our legs properly, no matter the top of our backswing, assuming that it is not like horrifically out of place, we should be able to move through the through the ball efficiently, just like all of just like the the four great players you can no longer see in this picture did it, because they all had different backswing positions. So when I was working on these, they were more drills that involve the leg itself and didn't involve really kind of going after the ball the way you'd want it in a full swing. So I came up with another drill that I call the dynamic lateral lunge driver drill. And notice the, the subtitle of my book that pisses off really some pros, most pros perhaps, and really good amateurs. But you know, the amateurs that can't break 100, 90, or 80, that's who I'm talking to here. So how do you do this? Because this kind of position looks pretty good at the top. How did I get there? Now you might say, well, the feet are too wide and blah, blah. Yeah, I get that. But the idea is to work the legs. Now for me, I don't get good leg work unless I spread my legs wider. That's how I kind of train my brain to at least start to learn how to move my legs properly. So what do you do first? Well, first thing you got to do is you have to identify your proper set up distance from the ball, which I've discussed multiple times. You need to figure out where you are in this spectrum. I'm a D. I am a D. You need to figure out what you are. And I theoretically, I could do E. I just feel uncomfortable with my elbows, with my shoulder, elbow, wrist, and club head all in one line like Mo Norman and, Bryn, uh, and Bryson DeChambeau do. So set up like this. 
Now, the way, because I had a problem getting into the top of the backswing and, and, and work my legs with my upper body. So I figured, well, let me try a modification of how I get there with the drill I learned from David Lee, which is called, he, he calls it the up route move. So you can see I pick the club up, don't swing it back, pick it up, and now turn back. And then now move through the ball. Move through the ball. Now the thing is, what we do when we're watching this, you're probably watching my upper body and club. We want to watch the legs. So, because these are leg drills. Well, this is upper body and leg, but the focus is to get the legs working right. So, top, backswing, see the leg action. This leg action is, is, you know, it's, it's my amateur version of pro leg action. It's, you know, it's the best I have. So my suggestion would be to learn these drills. Very, very simple. I've shown all my key drills, right? The squatting driver, lateral lunge, dynamic lateral lunge driver drill. And it's very clear and very obvious. And if you want to read about it and get more details on it, you can head right over to Amazon and score a, a copy of the book. But this should show you, assuming you haven't stopped watching the video right now, that it is ridiculous to focus and worry about your upper body position unless it is horrifically inappropriate. And you saw how diverse the backswings can be between Hogan, Nicholas, Nelson, and Miller Barber. As long as our leg work is proper, we should be able to get the ball back to impact and pretty much keep the ball in place. So you need to learn how to work your legs. That is the most important thing that us amateurs can do is learn to work our legs.